seem that we are now living in the last days. As we consider that concept, many are asking the questions of themselves, can I make it? Can I overcome? Can I endure? Can I persevere? Will I stand? Hi, this is Barry Phillips. This is day number one of the Torah portion, Nisavim. Let's go to the book of Devarim, chapter number 29, and begin reading with verse number 10. All of you are standing today. The word standing there in the plural, all of you, plural, is Nisavim. All of you are standing today before Yahweh, your Elohim, your leaders, your tribes, your elders, and your officers, all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, your sojourner who is in the midst of your camp, from the one who cuts your wood to the one who draws your water, so that you enter into a covenant with Yahweh, your Elohim, and into his oath, which Yahweh, your Elohim, makes with you today in order to establish you today as a people for himself, and he himself to be your Elohim. As he has spoken to you, and as he sworn to your fathers, to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov. Let's continue with this thought of standing. How do we stand? Consider the historical moment that we've just read about. Moshe is given a series of five speeches in the book of Devarim, Deuteronomy. And in the course of these speeches, he is making his last efforts to prepare this, what word do I use? This nation of grumbling, ill-fitted, ill-adjusted people to become Am Israel, to become the nation of Israel, and to be prepared mentally, physically, structurally, socially, um, in all aspects of their living, to enter into the land, actually take possession of the land, and then endure in the land. It's not enough that they go in. It's not enough that they win their military conquest. But they need to be in the land long term to settle in the land and gain the benefits that the land has to offer them. So he, in this effort to prepare them, is making these speeches. He has just concluded a speech in which he has gone through chapter 28, that chapter that opens up with great, wonderful, flourishing promises of prosperity and stability and security, to be followed by these horrendous curses that would fall upon a wayward people until it would seem that they are ground almost into powder to a place of abject uh, disgust and poverty before they will repent. So it begs the question, how bad does it have to become before a people are willing to repent? I asked this question last week. Uh, hello, America. Hello. Let's let's pay attention. How bad do things have to be before we will actually begin to repent? Now is to be the time to be on our face, seeking Him and asking Him for forgiveness of our junk, our stuff. But let's reel it back in and go back to the subject at hand. How do we stand? These people's face had to be pale with terror and with fear. And now Yah is laying upon them the reality that you are standing here and ready to enter into now my covenant. Mom and dad to this generation entered into this covenant all the way back in Shemot chapter number 19. They began that, that covenant all the way back in uh, Shemot chapter 12, where they begin to hear about Pesach and our Passover. And so in this long 40 years journey, they've had a covenant, but they didn't live according to the covenant, and the covenant did not benefit them. The book of Hebrews chapter number 8 says, because they did not have belief. So now he's offering their children, the second generation, the same covenant. And Moshe is saying, you're standing here 
and sight of Mount Gerizim and Mount Deval, and you are now entering into this covenant. And they may be asking, and how do we do what mom and dad was not able to do? Two answers here. Let's consider these. First of all, they're standing together. Moshe goes through the list of people who are standing here. Men, women, children, those who have servitude roles to play in the company of Israel. All of you, even the stranger who is walking with you, you're all in this together. Americans like to be a rugged individual. We like to be independent. We like to stand on our own two feet and make our own way. But what we're learning in the study of the Torah is that we need to stand as a community. For some of us, that means leaning on those that we congregate with, those that we meet with every week. Others of us, that group is much smaller. It's two, three, four, or five in a living room somewhere or a kitchen table as you study together. And then my hat's off to the heroes in the Hebraic Roots Movement, and that is families and individuals who have no one else. I know of uh, individuals. I know of couples. I know of small families. And you're out there by yourself and you have no one to meet with. And yet you continue on with your faithfulness. You study, you pray, you walk up rightly. Um, you write and we try to help and to encourage. But it's easy or easier, much easier when you have a large congregation or some substantial number of people to walk with and you can call and you can share your needs with and you can meet with and pray. But when you're by yourself, my head is off to you. You genuinely are heroic in your walk before Messiah. But you're connected. Through 10-minute Torah, through other efforts, we are connected together. And so we stand, even if it's from a long distance, we stand with you. We are standing together. It's important for us to understand that the word says to stand in the book of Galatians, chapter number five, verse one, in the freedom with which Messiah has made us free, stand firm then and do not be held with the yoke of slavery. Take your stand Determine what is righteous, what is right, and take your stand. In Ephesians chapter number 5, Rav Shaul is saying that we wrestle not against flesh, blood, principalities, or authorities, war, war rulers, darkness of this age. We wrestle against all of the spiritual wicked in high places. It's not... Um, flesh and blood, but against all of these other things, spiritual wickedness. Because of this, take up the complete armor of Elohim so you have power to withstand in the wicked day. And when you've done everything else, stand. Stand up. Secondly, how we ask the question, well, then how do I do that? I just, I'm looking for the endurance, but I'm already being worn out by all the restrictions and all of the stuff and the theories, conspiracies, the problems, the world turmoil. I'm already tired. The second reason that we can stand is not just that we lean on one another, but we're standing before Yahweh our Elohim. Now, this has two aspects to it as well. So the second point has a sub point. Number one and point number two is that we're standing before Yah and he wants us to stand. He desires us to stand and will enable us to do so. The sub point is that we do so through Yeshua. In the book of Luke, chapter number 24, beginning with verse five, it talks about the women who went to the grave to find Yeshua and they were asked, why are you seeking the living one among the dead? Verse 6, he is not here. He has been raised up. The Hebrew concept there is calm. He stood up. That is, he has come to life again. And in verse number 7, they, was, they were reminded how Yeshua said that he had to stand up alive on the third day. You and I can stand because Yeshua stands. 
He's already tasted the worst of it and overcome. He's already been to the belly of death itself. and He's overcome. He stands, stand in him. Yeshua is our key. Lean on him. Stand up. More tomorrow. To the end, Shalom. 